Welcome back to part three of rebuilding a Lima, uh, Lima C38 class specific. I'm just going to catch up on what I've done, what I've done in the time off since last filming. I've erected this side's rods off camera because I'd never done it before, and I'd rather do it and not film it first time, just in case something goes wrong. So I'm not misleading people and leading them in the wrong direction. I've also started repainting the model into a black. 38. Um, a me member of the group had had uh, dis discussed with me the possibility of of making it making it so it's all wheel pickup. So uh, so I've started that bit of conversion work. He's he's going to make me some um uh, so another brass pickup to go in here. Um, also, when when I started to reassemble it out here on the other side. I found out I'm missing the nut there, so Al from from AR Kits has a suitable nut and is forwarding it to forwarding to it to me. Thank you, Al. Show you like my body. It's now a, a black. I'm apparently going to go over this with a, a gloss. The last coat will have to be a gloss. This currently has three coats of of black. I painted a little bit of the Loco Cab, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. The tender, I've, I've just painted it black and I've reversed the, t the pickups. That's going to be a, a re major rebuild because I've got to drill a hole. Oh, in there somewhere, so I can pass some pass two wires through to eliminate the tender pickup, which we've talked about, uh, eliminate the, lo the bar, Loco Bar pickup, which we've talked about before in the previous video. So anyway, on to the next part. I'll t take the paint pins off off camera, but I'll reassemble reassemble the rest of it I c as far as I can while I wait wait for that nut. Uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoy this part. And we're back. All right. It, so as you see, I've taken the cr crank pins off. So first things first is you put the first crank pin, the first con rod. You line up. You line up with the mech. This is hard to do on camera. That's why I didn't do the other side on camera. The recon rods must go that way up. Uh, just there because it looks more because on here the A sections here. That I believe that's where where the oil for the crank pin goes on the real thing. So it's important the oil. Yeah, it looks more realistic if you put them like that. Just doesn't look as realistic. But again, this is a model, so it doesn't really matter either way. As one of the members of the Doggers, Doggers Ben Facebook group pointed out, this is just a got. This is not a scale model. It was designed as a kid's toy, pretty much. When I've lost the crank pin. Yeah, it's just a kid's toy, pretty much. These were built. These are designed back in the days when there were not, were not many Australian outline modelers. So yeah, uh, so any so these are good to run to annoy um, the rivet counters. For instance, I've seen I've seen videos of one done up in what we call a candy livery. For people in New South Wales and Australia, Australia, the trains will know what the candy livery is. It's like red and white and all that's a diesel livery. Uh, steam engines were never painted up in. In candy, so it's great to know the rubber counters when you have Lima 38 running around in in can candy, and this nuts, this thing's being annoying. So you st you start you start putting these on at eight, at opposite ends of the loco, because this one goes in, this goes in and seals the other two. As well, it holds all the other valve gear in place, which we can only assemble halfway through. As always, if you lose a part, best you can call around, hope hope someone has parts, or you call AR kits, and and Al always has a part of some description lying around. Even if it's not a genuine part, he, he may have a screw that fit. He may have a bolt that fits. 
We spent about an hour on the phone yesterday just trying to figure out which part of, like, which size it's, it's lost. And, well, not lost, misplaced. It's probably somewhere in the shed. I just can't be bop. It'd be a real pain in the ass to search a 6 by 5 meter shed looking for a bolt that's so so small. Quite literally, you need um, tweezers to, do, to work with it. And now, if the wheels are all quartered up properly, all these should meet. Which they're not. It's a little, it's a little bit out of quarter. So to quarter, quarter a lemon mac, you, you grab either side of the wheel and just twist gently. It has to come... It has to come this way a little bit. And we're back, the wheels are quartered, and the last bit of that, the last bit's in. So now this bit this bit goes in top of the cylinder. This bit was one this bit yesterday took me about an hour to hour to do on do on the on the other on the other side, so I may pause the video and then then restart it. This bit goes on top of that bit. It's a lot hard, it's really hard to do this actually on camera because you need to get up in, up in the right angle and everything. As you see, the it constantly comes undone on you. As many people that have steam engines will tell you, or steam locomotives, the tricky bit with steam engines is maintenance because there's so many moving parts, so many exterior moving parts. You can see what's wrong, but they're so small they, they just don't want to go together. So I'll, I'll, I'll pause the video here and I'll take, take a photo of it when it's back in. And we're back. Uh, it's, it's, uh, about half an hour later, I, fi I finally have got that, that little screw to secure this. So anyway, this bit now, if I had the bolt, which I lost, would go on here. Hang on, that's the wrong way around. I think that's the wrong way around. Crap. Yo, hang on. I think it goes like that. Goes that. Then that crazy valve here. So this is as far as we can we can work on the locomotive self without start starting to reassemble the locomotive. So let's start now. And I'm back. So, sorry for that. Sorry for that jump cut. I was ha having some trouble with, with the iPad. It just randomly stopped recording and then wouldn't start. So anyway, e now now we've got the, the front bogey on. This turns into a 460. Now let's turn this 460 into a 462. This job is quite simple on the Lambda model. First of all, you get you take this thing. This way to drive it. It's like a... a, a met, some sort of metal bolt with a lick. That goes pretty sure. Let's put that way up just to see if it works. Again, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure if this was in the bit that was saved or not. But I'm not a repairman. I'm. I'm pretty much self-taught, so I could be doing something wrong and. You'll, and there'll probably be people screaming with screen saying, Oh no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And that's not going to work. Most of, it, most of this is just trial and error. Like, this is the first time I've done such a major work on any any engine. Let's try it that way around.
by the way, this engine has officially been named. It's not. I know. I know. Um, New South Wales engines don't didn't normally carry names. It's this one's name is Blackjack. But after all, we we discussed it on the group, and this like his future owner. Decides she likes, she likes the name, so yeah. Her uh, official name is Blackjack. I still haven't decided decide on uh, Loco number yet. So maybe you guys can help me. The uh, spare Loco numbers in my fleet of 38s. Um, I've got 01. I've got. Uh, 13, 30, and 08 on order. So, which which number which number do you reckon she she should be numbered? Anyway, I'll cut here and I'll and I'll get back to work on the tender. Because once this this um, 38's fully back together, connected to the tender and all that, it'll be permanently wired, so permanently fixed. So I thought I might take a chance now to add the crew. After all, there's nothing worse than an uh, empty cab locomotive. So I'll just put that weight on there so you guys can keep seeing looking in the cab while I'm working. I have uh, done a little bit of, of the cab painting. I'm not particularly good at it. Don't have a setting off hand, but it is what it is. So we put the fireman in, and we put a driver in. I could probably get a, get a Hornby crew to put in there, so I have a guy sitting down. But where, where's the fun in that? This bit's going to be, be difficult on this angle. 